but there's a lot that comes directly from nature into humanity. Whether it's clean air, fresh water, or whether it's nutrients that goes from the forest to the fields of poor farmers, adding to their crop. Oh, you need to start putting values to these services, ecosystem services, and I think that's really what the game is about. Um, the World Bank has started a project called the Wealth Accounting and Valuation of Ecosystem Services Project, and this WAVES project, as it's known, will bring a few leading countries together to begin to adjust their national accounts so that they can include natural capital and the flows, the ecosystem service flows that come from natural capital. These will not replace GDP because you still need to know what you've manufactured and how much surplus that generated. But it will also show the surplus generated in human well-being terms from nature's flows, and especially the flows from nature to the poor, which are really important, 50 to 90 percent of the GDP of the poor, so to speak. Today, I think there's a, there's a combination of uh, wanting to be virtuous and a combination of wanting to be new and different and then sort of a, a clique, if you like. And these are both good things. I mean, you, know, you do need to be virtuous and you do need to feel special about doing what you're doing. Because as of now, not every green product is priced competitively with the brown product equivalent. Some are, some are not. Time will come when, with the expansion of, of uh, purchasing of green products and with economies of scale, and with new techniques and innovation in manufacturing techniques, you will get economies as well in terms of price and lower prices for green products. That's, that will come later. Oh, there are many companies which are moving forward. You know, what tends to happen is that people see the storm coming and they take cover, or they move their location, or they change their strategy. People are seeing the storm coming of the constraints to growth of the constraints to the natural resources that they use for their normal business. And are therefore, they're changing their business models. They're beginning to be more accountable for what they use out of nature. They're beginning to report some of these actions. They're beginning to reduce and be efficient in the use of materials, and so on and so forth. So these are anticipatory moves. There's no panic right now in their minds. Perhaps there should be. <laughs> but there's no panic in their minds right now. It's much more a question of anticipating a change and positioning yourself better to be able to capture a better market share more loyal clients, and more profits when the time comes. I think in some respects, the storm is here. Right? The thing is, the storm is not in one dimension. It is in many dimensions. Uh, the biodiversity storm and the climate storm have started. There are countries where you're beginning to see severe impacts of flooding and droughts, cyclones, and weather events which are just not sounding normal. So that is, in a sense, an, ex an existence of storm. And there are other countries where you're seeing very severe depletions of biodiversity, forest cover, and the loss of freshwater capacity. And I think that, again, is a sign of the storm. But then there are other aspects of the storm in terms of the use of uh, subsoil assets, especially oil and coal. And prices have gone up, but not to levels which make it too uncomfortable to use. So there, that may come later. Who knows? The energy storm may follow. We want sunshine now. Okay, so the point is, uh, what is what we are walking into is not mere, not like an English rainfall. It's more like an Indian monsoon. It rains. It pours. Cats and dogs. Right? You don't want to be in that without a, a proper umbrella or, or without cover and comfort. And I think we need to anticipate. So in that sense, what you describe about some companies taking steps ahead of time, that is wise, but that's not sufficient to cover you and me because today we are still open to the risk of surges in oil prices and destruction of infrastructure with which we are comfortable, familiar, and we find useful. We can't afford that kind of dislocation in our lives, otherwise we will really suffer. So in that sense, we are really still exposed to the storm which has begun to happen. But this is really the first generation of leaders that has all of the information that it needs to act and none of the excuses that previous generations had. So in that sense, it is really the first generation that has the, the ability to take action, and the last generation which has the ability to not take action. So they're at a critical turning point, if you like. And I think you will see some leaders breaking ranks. And uh, this morning, you heard from the Prime Minister of Barbados, his view of Barbados and, uh, and his country and what he wants to do. If you were to take him, transplant him into take what he said and transplant it into the mouths of other national leaders, it just wouldn't sound that it was them speaking. 
So clearly he's seen something. He's reacting in a way because he sees the impact on his society. And he's very careful to distinguish the Barbados economy from the society of Barbados. He said it clearly. His economy, Barbados is not just an economy, it is a society. And it's not just about the total amount that they consume, produce, or sell, but it is about the well-being of his people. So you see some of these leaders coming forward, but others will have to adjust their mindsets and follow. And I think once again it's a question of uh, collective recognition of the issues and collaborative solutions to the problems. I would wish for a new cooperation because today most of what we are seeing is the results of a brown economy with, and the agent of the brown economy is the old cooperation. Yesterday's cooperation basically is an optimizer of profits. Its goals are not aligned with society. Its externalities are not measured and they are not managed. Its advertising is irresponsible. Its leverage is almost unlimited. These are not ways of managing a business in a wise way. And these are not certainly ways of managing a business to the benefit of people. It may create profits and therefore some benefits for short term for shareholders, but will not create wealth for society. And that should be the purpose of the corporation. It should be community and society and not just profits for a small group of shareholders.